Hello, Chemistry 12. This is uh, Mr. Chan, and today's lesson is going to be on um, oxidation uh, numbers, okay? Now, so what you have is you should have the notes here, and I'm just going to share it with you. Come on, share screen. Okay, now, we to use the terms oxidation number. Now, some of you might say, well, what is oxidation number? Come on, let's see. What oxidation number is, is the idea if, another name for that is AKA the ion charge. Okay, now you remember the term combining capacity or ion charge when we're talking about chemical naming? We're just, officially they are called oxidation numbers. So it is the charge an atom or ion would possess if all the bonds are assumed to be ionic. Now, this is one thing about oxidation reduction. There is no such thing as covalent bonds anymore. Because it's a transfer of electrons, what we're assuming is, is that everything will be ionic. So there's going to be a transfer of electrons. There's no more sharing. Okay? Now, the electronegativity of an atom determines whether it will readily gain or lose electrons. The more electronegative an atom is, the greater its ability to gain electrons or be reduced. Now, this goes back to chemistry 11. So if we take a look back at chemistry 11, when we did chemical bonding, okay, and I think some of you may have remembered this. So what is electronegativity is the ability to pull on a shared pair of electrons, okay? So whichever one is stronger, <clears throat> what will happen is that it will gain the electrons, okay? And back in Chem 11, what you should have learned was, let me see here, did we have the bond energy table, okay? Let me see, Lewis questions, bond, nope, that's Eliana, okay. Um, electronegativity chart right here, okay. So what you have is the electronegativity chart and you will notice that the numbers are increasing as you go from left to right. And again, goes back to um, more attraction between the protons and electrons, okay. And notice it goes down from top to bottom of the periodic table. And it goes, it re, you remember that is from because of the increasing orbit. Okay. Now, so that was electronegativity. Now, there are some general rules, and I'll let you read through these ones, but you should remember. Remember. Okay, you should remember these ones, okay? Pure elements are zero. Monoatomic ions are whatever the assigned charges are, like potassium, calcium, they all have assigned charge. Hydrogen, oxygen could be a minus one charge. In peroxide, it's a, oh sorry, oxygen is a minus two charge. In peroxide, it's minus one. Hydrogen is plus one, but in metals, metal hydride, it's a minus one, okay? Now, a couple of key things you should be aware of. The sum of all the positive and negative charges must equal the overall charge in the species, okay? And by looking at the change in oxidation numbers, one can tell whether or not a substance was reduced or oxidized. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down into A. Okay, I'm gonna call this A, and I'm gonna call this B. So let me give you an example. So let's say, for example, let's say SO3, I want you to find the oxidation number of sulfur. Now, 
back in chemistry 11, some of you might say, oh, Mr. Chan, sulfur, if we look at the periodic table, sulfur, let's see, atomic number, where's my periodic table? Ah, here we go. This is what happens when you don't have a periodic table. Okay. You might say, well, Mr. Chan, isn't oxygen and sulfur in the same column? So doesn't sulfur have a minus two charge? And the answer is no, because going back to chemistry 11, remember you did like the wave nodes, we had the SPDF orbitals, okay? Where we had this one, okay? Remember we had this like 3S2, 3P, whatever. Because sulfur is in the third row, what happens is that it has a D orbital that it can be used. So an easy way to think about it for your periodic table, okay, is anything in the third row and below, so anything here, okay, the charge can be something different than what we had taught you back in chemistry 11, okay? So in this case, <clears throat> how would we do it? So what I would do is I would actually form a little table, okay? So I would go here, I'd be S and O. So here would be individual, here would be total. Now, because we don't know what sulfur is, <clears throat> we put X. Oxygen, if we go back to our notes up here, has a minus two charge, okay? It has a minus two charge, so it's minus two. Total here would be X, and it would be minus six. Why? Because it's minus two times three. Where did I get the three from? is here. Okay, now so how would we get the answer? So we get x minus 6 is equal to 0. Where did I get the 0 from? Is from this neutral charge. So here this is neutral. So from up here all the way down to here, okay? And using your math, x should be equal to plus six, okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, how about, let me give you another example, okay? So let's say, for example, we have, let's say m, and SO4. Now, I would say, what is the oxidation number of MN? Now, in this case, you might say, well, Mr. Chan, I don't get it. You know, how do I know what the charge on sulfur is? Is it plus six, like this previous example, or is it minus two, like what we've learned back in Chem 11, Chem 12. Well, the idea is this. You need to recognize that SO4, oh, it's SO4 brackets two. It's about here, okay? Here, SO4, this is a polyatomic. So when we build the table again, okay, I like the table, you don't have to do it. If you have MN, you keep SO4, you have your individual total, so this would be X, SO4 would be minus two. You would know that from the charge of the polyatomic and then you would have x and minus four, okay? 
So you have x minus 4 is equal to 0. Y, again, because this is neutral. And how I could figure it out is because SO4 up here has no charge. So therefore, the answer is X is equal to plus 4. Okay? Now, last thing for this particular assignment, by looking at the change in oxidation numbers, one can tell if the substance was reduced or oxidized. Okay? Now, let me give you an example here. Okay? So in this case, for B, let's say if we had, you know, Ce plus 4, or let's say here, Ce plus 2, plus carbon gives you, let's say, uh, C plus 4 and Ce. Now, you can break it up if you want, okay, into our half reactions. But what you notice here, Ce went from a plus 2 down to 0, okay? Or let's say, let's not C, C, yeah, CE plus two. Oh, let me change that up a bit. Okay. Let's say we had, uh, I don't know, uh, ah, HCl plus zinc gives you ZnCl2 and H plus. No, again, we don't have to worry about balancing it. Okay, or H2, sorry. In this case, the H went from a charge of plus one down to zero. So in here, H must have been reduced. And here for zinc, zinc went from zero to here, went to plus two. So here it must be oxidized, okay? Now you might say, Mr. Chan, what about chlorine? Well, here chlorine went from a charge of minus one. And notice this chlorine is also a charge of minus one. So notice it did nothing. So in this case, we could say H is reduced and zinc is, or H plus is reduced, zinc is oxidized. And that is by looking at the oxidation numbers of each of the species in the reactants and the product, just to see what happened. Did it go up or go down? Again, how did I get these numbers? Is by doing this particular breakup, okay? All right.